वेलकम वेलकम टू वायु शास्त्र फ्यूचर साइंटिस्ट मीट चैप्टर नंबर ियरी presenter he is the present is 39th theory with a lot of new topics something like uh, sky hook uh, then uh, one uh, one is presenting on the series planets of solar system and beyond the uh, planets of the solar system and beyond then artificial intelligence evolution of universe uh, like that we have uh, interesting topics so for those who are watching it for the first time let me introduce what is what is this future scientist meet what is the vision what is uh, vayu shastra aerospace all these things so basically we all love science we all love uh, uh, not everyone most of us like science uh, for example if you like sports music dance drama you will have a specific set of places you go to dance class from age 5 or 6 say bharatanatyam or any dance class If you like music, your parents put you in some music class. That also happens in very young age. Likewise, athletics, robotics, uh, any sports forms, everything happens. But if you are passionate about aeronautics or aerospace or rockets or outer space galaxies, where will you go and join when you are, say, six or seven years old? Here is the solution: Vayu Shastra. provides that service so we started uh, facilitate we facilitate this knowledge transfer from age 5 you might think what will a 5 year old will understand in aeronautics i will ask the question uh, like i will i will put in a different way if a child can able to understand a story or listen to a story like this in age 5 then he can able to understand your motives for example you take uh, any epic if you take ramayana there's lot about there's lot of flying involved say the sita gets kidnapped is in uh, ravana uses his pushpaka pushpaka vima hanuman used to fly and bring this mountain sanjeevini mountain and if you take mahabharata there's lot of uh, usage of all this uh, weapons like this, there are a lot of science involved in all the epics um, that may happened before or may not i'm not sure but whenever i read it it's full of science even i when i go to temples it's like i see it's full of science so uh, we put everything in the form of storytelling method for it's designed for customized for children from age 5 so 5 to 14 it's all offline we we combine stories science and hands on knowledge then for college students we provide advanced level programs so during pandemic we don't know what to do so we came up with this new methodology to trigger the spark uh, after researching life of lot of scientists so there is law, there is a science there is a lot of story and simple paper models so it has nine levels once the students complete all these nine levels they will be put in a group called the young researchers group so in this group the students get to do lot of uh, study related study works like research works uh, related to black holes uh, asteroid mining mars colonization that can be anything and uh, they get to present so this was happening for 6 to 8 months then after 8 months of training uh, we started going live so currently we have more than 70 to 80 members in this young researchers group you have to the, the, we we started seeing the results so we took out the spark so india will have or the whole the world will have lot of uh, people who could decide the future of space industry so that's the motto and vision behind vayu shastra uh, that we are we are incubated in iit madras we are also uh, funded by them 
so our basic motto is this so this service our is our motto and today is the 26th chap chapter and uh, so we have five presenters so kavya ranadeep naman vishnu darsh uh, so let me introduce the first presenter of the day that's kavya from isha vidya matriculation higher secondary school kadalu uh, she is going to present on the topic artificial intelligence using agriculture and she is great sir kavya the stage is yours yes chagu namaskaram chagu shall i start yes yes please Namaskar to all. I am Kavya. Now I am going to present about the topic artificial intelligence in agriculture. Let's move to the presentation. Overview. First, understand what does artificial intelligence are. Second, life cycle of agriculture. Challenges faced in agriculture with traditional farming techniques are. how we can overcome challenges in agriculture with the application of artificial intelligence in agriculture introduction artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science with the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers artificial intelligence is not a man versus machine saga it's in fact man with machine synergy life cycle of agriculture first preparation of soil sowing of seeds adding fertilizers irrigation weed production harvesting storage first is preparation of soil it is the entire stage of farming where farmers prepare the soil for serving seeds this process involves breaking large soil clumps and remove debris at such as sticks rocks and roots also add fertilizers and organic matter depend on the type of crop to create an ideal situation for crops second sowing of seeds this stage requires taking care of distance between two seeds depth for planting seeds at this stage climatic condition such as temperature humidity and rainfall play an important role adding fertilizers to main soil fertility is an important factor so the farmer can continue to grow nutrient crop and healthy crops farmers turn to fertilizers because these substances contain plant nutrients such as nitrogen phosphorus and potassium fertilizers are simply plant nutrients applied to agricultural seeds to supplement the required elements formed naturally in the soil this stage also determine the quality of the crop irrigation this stage helps to keep the soil moist and maintain humidity underwatering or overwatering can hamper the growth of crops and if not done properly a leak it can lead to damage to crops the production weeds are unwanted plants that grow near crops or at the boundary of farms weed production is an important factor as weed decreases yields increases production cost end up with with harvest and lower crop quality harvesting it is the process of gathering ripe crop from the fields it requires a lot of labor for this activity so this is a labor intensive activity this stage 
also includes post harvest handling such as cleaning sorry packing and cooling storage this page of the food harvest system during which the products are kept in such a way as to guarantee food security other than during periods of agriculture it also includes packing and transportation of crops challenges faced by farmers by using traditional methods of farming in farming in farming climatic factors such as rainfall temperature and humidity play an important role in the agriculture life cycle increasing the deforestation and pollution result in climatic changes so it's difficult for farmers to take decisions to prepare the soil so seeds and harvest every crop requires specific nutrient in the soil in the soil there are three main nutrients nitrogen phosphorus and potassium require the soil the difference of nutrients can lead to poor quality of crop as we can see from the agricultural life cycle that wheat production plays an important role if not controlled it can lead to an increase in production cost and also it absorbs nutrients from the soil which can cause nutrition difference in the soil applications of artificial intelligence in agriculture use of weather forecasting with the change in climatic condition and increasing pollution it's difficult for farmers to remind the right time for sowing seeds with the help of artificial intelligence for farmers can analyze weather condition by using weather forecasting with help the plan the type of crop can be grown and when should be sown analyzing crop health by drones sky squirrel technologies has bought drone based aerial imaging solution for uh, monitoring crop health in this technique the drone captures data from field and then data is transferred via a usb drive from the drone to a computer and analyzed by experts This company used algorithms to analyze the captured images and provide a detailed report containing the current health of the farm. It helps the farmer to identify pests and bacteria, helping farmers to timely use of pest control and other methods to take required action. precision farming and productive analytics artificial intelligence application in agriculture have developed application and tools which help farmers in a correct and controlled farming by providing them proper guidance to farmers about water management crop rotation timely harvest type of crop to be grown optimum planting pest attacks nutrition management agriculture robotics artificial intelligence companies are developing robots that can easily perform multiple tasks in farming fields this type of robot is trained to control wheat and harvest crop at a faster pace with a higher volume compared to humans this type of robots are trained to check the quality of crop and detect weed with picking and packing of crops at the same time these robots are also capable to fight with challenge faced by agricultural force labor artificial intelligence enable the system to detect pest pests are one of the worst enemies of the farmers 
which damage crops. Artificial intelligence systems use satellite image and compare them with the historical data using artificial intelligence algorithms and detect that if any insect has landed and which type of insect has landed, like the locust, glasshopper, etc., and send alerts to farmers to their smartphones so that farmers can take record precautions and use record pest control. Thus, artificial intelligence helps farmers to fight against pest. Conclusion. Artificial intelligence is agriculture not only helping for farmers to automate their farming, but also shifts to precise cultivation for higher crop yield and better quality while using fewer resources. Companies involved in improving machine learning or artificial intelligence based products or service like training data for agriculture drone and automated machine maker will get technological advancement in the future will provide most useful application to the sector helping the world deal with the food production issues for the growing popul population thank you jago i have a quiz link i just share it to you mm. So, if anyone have any doubts or any um, any information to be added in this, you can share with the Tavya. Because this one of the, the need of the art um, kind of topic. So, how do you, how each one of you can implement artificial intelligence in agriculture? You can come up with one point. You can put it in chat box. I'll read it out. How will you implement artificial intelligence in agriculture? Or how would you bring in aeronautics related or aerospace related things for the use of agriculture? I think all, all are scientists here. I think each of you come up with a few ideas. Mm. I put a quiz link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the quiz link. So I, I'm waiting for the people to reply. Vishnu, we can use some soils of the other planets. Whoa. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, yeah, we can actually uh, try. That's, that's like nice. Vishnu sent a direct message. I think. Some soils of other planets. Yeah, you can bring uh, the soil of Mars and try with uh, various combinations how to cultivate. Uh, mm, Jacko. Uh, um, in a name and they uh, or robot lavander, mm. a cultivation of your deep on the. என்ன Guys, you can share the link in uh, Isha's school group. Sir, one minute, sir. I will join. Yes, yes, yes. Seven members has joined. Yeah. Seven joined. So I need to put the link in the live. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you get this topic idea, Kalya? Jago, I'm just uh, thinking, Jago. In future, you want to build something like this? Some artificial related things for uh, agriculture? 
Yes, so go my uh, teacher one time uh, teach like this topic. So I just took that topic. So we can teach you, Vaish Shastra can teach you how to build a drones. In the drones, you can put the pipes or you can put the seed, uh, the seed border of the core, uh, the, or you can uh, fix all this uh, weather sensors. A lot of things you can do for agriculture. Or you can uh, add one camera to it. You can teach all of this. So the drone has a lot of applications. Satellites have a lot of applications. Even I had an idea of uh, using balloon satellites to create artificial rain. So if uh, any of you are interested, we can try here. There is a planning weather to grow crop. Leather type on it. Yes, Vishnu. மலை மேகத்துல போய் You can read the questions. Artificial intelligence is about. Artificial intelligence is about. Get the option. Yes, sir. Playing a game on computer, making machine intelligent, prom- programming on machine with your own intelligence, putting your intelligence in machine. An artificial intelligence agent uh, prescribes and uh, acts upon the environment using sensors, perceiver uh, actors, uh, both sensors and actuators. Sensors, actuators, actuators, perceiver, sensors. Both sensor and actor, that's right. Most of you did. Artificial intelligence helps the farmers to analyze. water usage or soil condition all above Artificial intelligence replaces the knowledge that farmers have 
always had Tara, Tara, Star. Yes, Tago. In what way can artificial intelligence become harmful? Yes, Papan. Anadi, Anish, Harijit. Artificial intelligence is all about robots. Any one is the right answer. I was called by two person. I will get out of it. Okay, star is leading. I don't know who is that star. None of the Brady, John McCarthy. Sir, I guess it is some YouTube person. Okay. Next. Can you tell me about it? Chagu, this is the 10th question. Oh, okay. The major challenge is faced by traditional farmers for shortage of labor. How can you solve this issue by using AI? Oh, this is fill in the blanks. You will see funny results now. First, scroll down. Okay. Next, scroll down. Agriculture mm -hmm. robots. Nice. Next step. Where are the answers? Scroll down, scroll down. I want to read the answers. By using them as farmers. Ah. It's no mass. Agricultural robots. Both are like similar answer.
Okay, only five people uh, answered. Yes, sir. So Vishnu has this always this this social thing in his thing. Nice. Okay, let's see the leaderboard. Next question, you need to collect. Ah, end. This is the last question. Do you want to end with yes? I'm telling you how to do it. Three, two, one. Name. Anish third. Who did it say? Star first. Ranadi second. Na. Yes. Fourth book. The Darshas and the Taishwarya is a very mind marginal. Matesh Harijit. All are marginal. Who is the star? Hundred percent right. Not telling your name, ma. Who are you, Mister or Mister Star? So I guess I'm guessing so that they are from YouTube because. Okay. Yes. 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 Thank you, Kavya. That's a nice uh, topic, taking on social issue. Well done. So all of you start thinking, how do you start using all this uh, uh, hero-related or artificial intelligence-related products and use it for agriculture? Because without it, nothing works. We need a tummy to do some work, no? The tummy needs food. So food comes from farmer only. So we should. Sir, yes. Someone named uh, in YouTube. Someone named YouTube. Very late. Aruna, super. Okay, I don't know who is that Aruna. Fine, well done. So thank you. Let's give a huge round of applause for Kavya. I love you, Kavya. Thank you, Jabir. Nice, nice, Kavya. Okay, next, uh, let me welcome the CINO of Target Space. That's our uh, Chief Innovation Officer. Correct? Yes, okay. sir. Innovation Officer of Target Space. That's none other than our Darsh Rai. So he is going to present on the topic, Big Bang, the evolution of a universe. And he is... Great five student of HRNPS. That's what is the full full name of your uh, school? Sir, Hill Rock National Public School. Sir, Hill again. Rock National Public School. I should put that. Okay, so that's to to so he he has he has done more than I think uh, forty to fifty presentation in last one year put together as a team as well. So. He is one of the senior most uh, candidate in our uh, researchers group. Darsh, the stage is always. Yes. So thank you, Jagu, for introducing me. And so I am going to talk about Big Bang and the evolution of the universe. So it's going to be like part one, part one, and uh, future presentations. I'm going to talk about other theories also, like string theory, etc. Nice. So where it all come from? Everything from you and me on Earth to all planets, stars, galaxies in the universe. The Big Bang is where everything that we in our universe today came from. The Big Bang is where that we have in our universe today came from. The theory of Big Bang was proposed by George Lemaitre in 1927. George did not call it Big Bang theory. He called it the hypothesis of primeval atom. The term Big Bang was coined by Fred Hoyle, an English astronomer during the BBC 
he said it during BBC radio broadcast in 1949. So what is Big Bang Theory? Astronomers believe that the Big Bang was the beginning of the creation of this universe and occurred about 13.7 billion years ago. What emerged from the Big Bang Theory? It started with a singularity. Everything in the universe is packed into a tiny dot, smaller than an atom. The temperature was nearly infinitely hot, billions of billions of billions of degrees. It expanded so fast that it would be just like explosion. The universe that we know was born. Time, space, all matter, all began with the Big Bang. As the universe kept on growing at a fantastic rate, it expanded and cooled. The astronomer Edwin Hubble in 1920s discovered that the universe is not static. It is expanding and contracting continuously. What matter and energy were during no, this? There is a dark matter that there is a dark energy that is making the universe expand and accelerate at a larger rate than it did millions of years ago. Time after the Big Bang, four fundamental forces began to emerge in a billionth of a billionth of a billionth second after the Big Bang. The first form of gravity was the gravity. Then positive and electromagnetic forces, which is basically electricity. Then third and fourth form of energy emerges in strong and weak nuclear force, which operates in tiny distances and binds the center of the nuclei together in atoms. As the universe expanded and cooled, energy changed into particles of matter and antimatter. These two opposite types of particles largely destroyed each other, but some matter survived. What matter energy were during these extreme conditions? To explain this, let us uh, take Einstein's relativity theory E is equal to mc2. Einstein showed that the energy and matter are interchangeable. Energy is equal to mass into speed of light square. The first form of matter were called quarks. are called quarks, which instantly combine in triplet to form proton, positively electrical charge. Neutrons with no charge at all. Protons and neutrons make up the nuclei. Very so uh, soon, the electrons appear. This is lighter than lighter and have negative charge. Yet, protons and electrons, in spite of having opposite energy could not yet combine. Past plasma, a common state of matter similar to gas but most responsive to electromagnetic forces came into existence. Dominant, dominated by charged particles, after 380,000 years late after the Big Bang, as the plasma ends, we cross the mini threshold. No atoms could form. Atom is the basic unit of chemical. The charges of positive and negative could bind them together. Now the electricity neutral atoms comes to be after two changes and cancel each other. The first atoms were hydrogen and helium. Plasma ends. Atoms are formed. Light energy photons move freely in evidence of Big Bang. Then come stars, then slowly comes the galaxies. In 1960s, two researchers, Arno Penes and Robert Wilson, tried to eliminate the noise picked up by the microwave antennas. It turns out that this background noise or static was actually a cosmic microwave background, also known as CMB. CMB is essentially electromagnetic radiation that's left over from the Big Bang and the perimeters the entire universe. The radiation from CMB in photons, which means par particles representing the quantums of light, light was scattered off the electrons. Thus, the photons wandered through the early 
an universe just as optical light wanders through the dense fog. CMB is the afterglow of the Big Bang. One of the strongest evidence we have this event had happened. Future of the universe. Some astronomers think the universe will keep on expanding. While others think that the universe will someday collapse or squeeze itself and form a brick crunch. Time and space will answer for us with the evolution of the universe. So thank you for listening. For your precious time. Any doubts? Oh, so if you have any doubts, you can ask Dash. Yeah. It's very neatly done. And yeah. I, I forgot to mention, He's also a founder of this uh, channel called uh, Science Garage. So you can, uh, there you can yes. post your channel link. Okay. In. Sir, yeah. should I s- s- send the uh, uh, recording of the seconds of the video, sir? Um, uh, not necessarily. Anyway, it's live, no? Uh, no, sir. Okay. I already recorded it because. Okay, okay. Yeah, you can, you can. Or you can upload it. Okay, no yeah, you share that link. Okay, so I, I so share that link here. Okay. Yes. Nice. So and I have a quiz also. So yeah, I'm because... going to share this in uh, live as well. And I have a quiz also because people are asking. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So this is the presentation. Thus, share your channel link. I'm going to put it in Vaisha's okay, channel. Okay, second. Your channel. Okay, channel. Okay, channel. Yeah. Copy. No. Okay. Oh, Recent. So, so this is Dash. Uh, Dash uh, is uh, initiative. So do share and subscribe. And also subscribe. Okay, nice. So the quiz. Yeah, so quiz. I'll be sharing now. Yeah. Yeah, so continue. Hello. Gosh, the PP no. was awesome. Uh, just uh, what happened is that I have some internet issues, so I just leave that. Yeah, okay, okay, no yeah. So please join the quiz. Yeah. And I have it's time based only, you no know, Darsh. Yeah, it's time based. Okay. Many people are there. Sixteen. Is anyone joining because it is a time based? Uh, you can't join afterwards. Yeah. 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 So Dash's channel is added in uh, featured channel list. In our channel Thank list. you, sir. Job group. I think you can start that. Okay, sir. So because only six, uh, 16 people are there. Yeah, in yeah. no, current so what does the big bang theory tell us about the popular television show how did the universe end how did the universe began about the popular television sir, show <laughs> sir, it's also, sir it's also a netflix series so some people if they're googling sir they will like i know i know this is a very famous uh, this thing. So, yeah. Big bang theory. <laughs> yeah so some people sir yeah, they will put it this way <laughs> So next question. 
So what statement is true? The galaxies are moving towards us. The universe remains and static and unchanged in motion. The universe is expanding. None of these. All done. See that leaderboard. So Matthias is leading, and only a lot of people have told the correct answer. One. So, what scientist was responsible for discovering the Big Bang theory? Georges Lemaitre, Albert Einstein, Sir Isaac Newton, Edwin Hubble. So the correct answer was George's limit. CMB, cosmic ground radiation is radiation remaining energy from the Big Bang, incredibly cool. Microwaves are useful in our everyday lives. Astrology. <laughs> he puts one funny answer. No. Yes, sir. Because some people, sir, will just put some random thing, sir. <laughs> so I just put one random thing. Dash, can you show the leaderboard? Okay, one second. Like, this is the last question. No, let us second. Yeah. So Matish is leading, and oh. next is Anish. Ten points. Trillinga win money number Matish. Uh, do you want? I want to see the winners of the quiz. <laughs> so, Matthias, Anish, Noel, and yeah. Ria are the winners. Yeah. And also, a lot of people have put uh, Aishwarya, oh, Matthias, Adrit, Tarun, Anish, Noel, Ria. All of them are actually yeah. first only. Yeah. In one way. It's all like very close. Look, all the 10 point, 10 point difference. Yes, sir. Like only, like the last people also like only one question wrong, which is quite good accuracy. Well done, well done, team. Well done, Dash. So, you, Dash has this initiative called Science Garage. So, you can also subscribe this thing. And I have posted the link here in chat box, here also in live. And also, it's featured in our channel. Okay, thank you, Dash. Let's give a huge round of applause for Dash. All of you go on mute. Silly. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, no, someone is tapping the bench. Oh, no, sir, because I saw someone silly and sorry. I'm like, what is it? Okay, okay. I don't know. Okay. That's better. That's a nice presentation. Okay, then. Thank you, Dash, for a nice Thanks. presentation and the nice quiz. It's a neat and short. Now, let me, I'm going to next to the special presenter, our star presenter. <laughs> he has his own fan clubs right now for his crazy theories. The theory creating human. So he is going to present his 39th theory. And uh, that's our Vishnu Chintan. Vishnu Chittan. Vishnu Chittan, his theory number 39 is going to present. He is a grade 8 student from Sri Vagisha Vidyashram Trichy. Sri Rangam to be imperfect. Correct. The Sri Rangam boy who is coming up with uh, so many theories. So I keep on reminded, like I'm getting reminded of Ramanuja. Okay, I don't know why. Okay, Vishnu, you can start your theory. Jagul, I mean, present it. I mean, theory is under pushed. Better go. I mean, you want this? You know, I want to do it. Or then, just I mean, content publishing and so on. Ah, ma, ma, we are going to publish his theories into one book. That's for sure. 
one minute sir in in 11 11th theory after 11th yeah theory. yeah 50th theory when he finishes his 50th theory we are going to publish it and i have spoke to the i have i have i have worked with the publisher as well one minute sir yeah yeah lord the jaggu the source terms are prohibited in this place okay sir sorry okay jaggu chalo okay jaggu one minute sir ऑफिस yes, ट्रावल्ड That's why I'm a little, you know, tired and not able to present. I just traveled. Okay. It's been almost a few hours since I've arrived. Okay. Our Vishnu boy is presenting. Okay, sir. Minutes. Sir, can you see? Yes, I can see a lot of stars and the spiral galaxy. And the ball. Ah, I can see one ball also. Moving objects in space theory. Okay, let's see. Okay, and uh, I'm Mr. Kishan, and this is my 39th theory, moving objects in space theory, and uh, I am having a doubt or a question for you. Are you believing that if you throw an object, it moves on up to the end? Sorry, Vishnu, no. Vishnu, I think so. You presented this theory last time itself. No, no, no. This is the first. So he is asking a question. When you throw some, when you throw something onto space, will it keeps moving? How many of you say yes? How many of you say no? Jagu, should I say maybe, maybe because if we throw in space, no. Mm. Uh, in Earth, we we if we throw a high speed, mm. okay, for an example, high speed, no, that means that mm. it can exert the gravity and it can fly. Mm. It can move on the space, but if you go into some Objects like black hole, plan some pl some planets like black hole and okay, like wait, Jupiter. It will refine, still refine it. your question. Refine your question. Question, I na kaj tell you was all le. Sir, if the object, if you are throwing an object in the space, hmm. are you believing that it will move or it won't move or it will go far away? Okay, so uh, okay, that is the question. So there are also objects like black hole. There be like sun, stars, uh, planets, which will be like attracting this uh, uh, whichever object we throw, right? We are in space. You are saying. Okay, the question yes. is very simple. When you throw something, will it move or not? In space. In space. Not in Earth. Yeah. So I uh, most of them said maybe, maybe. uh tarun said it will go till infinite space yeah yep. that is the most expected answer um, so the one who said sorry for yes. those who said maybe i am asking a question for you then what about asteroids ah those who said maybe 
ஒரு <laughs> 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 because where is gravity presented at okay is it because of gravity or just a slope created by the heavy mass suspense sir uh, suspense suspense okay dria saying gravity will pull objects i said uh, because of the space time fabric who who else uh, tarun tell tell the asteroids will come to crash on planets mostly Uh, so the mass of the planets is greater than the mass of the asteroids so it it attracts the asteroids towards it if it comes too close so you are saying gravity matters yes okay. any other okay no one So I am saying, so as we saw in my last series, the space are made up of some magnetic or uh, the space is just magnetic and surrounded by some magnetic field so if we put an object where is it the ball if we can you see my cursor yes yes there's a like uh, straight line i can see arrow yep this is Uh, this blue line this uh, big white line this is magnetic field it will make the ball yeah see here like this ball going upward if we throw at the particular force and at the particular area it will go at that area and at the speed we have given to the Sorry, the force we have given to the ball, it will go at that speed. So as the so as the space is magnetic, uh, one minute. Sir. Yep, but how? it is moving top to bottom or uh, left to right how is changing its direction okay he has one more question how something is moving left to right or top or bottom like this ball going upside down and left to right uh, sorry right to left and uh, right to down left to down like this how it's changing its direction means as i said this space is filled up of more and most gravity or magnetic waves it will it is movable uh means is gravity gravity waves sorry magnetic waves they are movable 
now and it comes so here the gravity uh, magnetic fields are movable and can be merged like this so it will become like this or uh, someone higher someone curved or crippled someone but it's getting merged these magnetic fields are getting merged so the ball can change the direction so the magnetic waves or an orbit or a pathway in space for an object to move in that area particular area so can you understand one can understand okay na irukka adu puriyala na solunga krishna repeat this in tamil ones okay. i more, i want more deeper understanding of this okay so idha enak purinja varaikku na solren when you throw an object so why it is moving because there are a lot of magnetic lines around which uh, which keeps it moving but how it is moving left to right or top or bottom these magnetic yeah, lines i have a question twisted. this magnetic lines are twisted that's why this fluctuation not twisted sir it can be merged and it yes, i have a question okay so avinash has a question yes sir first of all how can you prove that space is magnetic hey have you come have you came in my last year what so he presented on a uh, theory last time that no but space magnetic yep space is magnetic yeah. okay i have done so can you just time. brief me on that one minute i will show sorry i am uh, i am not having uh, the presentation right now so shall i present it next week or chuma del del okay then uh, ah the space and the yep the space is magnetic because there is a gravity source main gravity source up in the space right here see at this top most area here there is a gravity source so cars in that they are going or moving up and uh, the magnetic uh, and the plan planets is also magnetic so as they are absorbing or making a uh gravity or uh, they are making the gravity the planets are the planets layer and uh, earth surface or the planet surface uh, matters on the gravity so if uh, we are saying it as a gravity but it is uh, upwards this uh, the main gravity source is right up here but okay Vishnu, um, I didn't understand, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I'll tr- I'll see the video and ask if it's fine. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. So yes. at this top mode, yeah. Yeah. See in this uh, area up to this. Uh, it's approximate roughly i am saying so this is a large amount or a large area so this is the gravity source actual main source of gravity is here but our layer or earth layer or planet layer is upwards or upside down in gravity so so only we are moving if we are gone to space we will move upside like this whereas in earth we will go down downwards so it is the actual source of gravity is here that here and the magnetic uh, 
suppose sir uh, the magnetic reaction happens in the planet so we are going down here this is crazy yep my mind is upside down now so this there is this is boy who is like putting this theory so why we are going down in earth because the sir one minute i have finished up. so if something is moving up we need to come down no yeah nice nice i like it so this is like uh, this will so, open your mind, this kind of yes i need to clarify you so avinash i am having a question for you then how these planets are moving uh, not even shaking at all and moving or uh, uh, rotating revolving without any disturbance because there is a pathway but we can't see it. so it can be uh, so as we face its magnetic force stars are here uh, asteroid build uh, all are magnetic so so the magnetic effects make all the space or uh, all the space magnetic so it makes a pathway right here which is we are saying at an orbit so it moving perfectly without any disturbance so as based on the theory i have done this theory so magnetic waves are around it if we throw a ball it will move upwards and it can it can it will move left right down up by right? the mergeable and uh, movable electromagnetic but magnetic waves right up here so that's it this why objects cannot float on space which is dependent to our earth gravity mm-hmm. okay. but I, it's like i won't so say it's a gravity but i will say it as a magnetic is it on me because it's an opinion yeah 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 but your theory is so crazy nice nice So I know. Actually, now I have a lot of work to do. No, I need to put all the Vishnu theories in one single video. Naman's uh, uh, series as one, and uh, I think uh, few more also started like series now. So this series will be like. Jago, I have into. also started. Yeah, yeah, that's what I need to put all this into single clips or single playlist for each of you. Uh, hey, any other you know? doubts? Yeah, any other doubts? No you doubt, da. Me, you are confusing. <laughs> you are making us to correct. Ah, uh, which no doubt. Yeah, if there is a magnet inside, if there is a magnet in the space, then why the always the is getting attracted only to Jupiter, uh, which is the largest planet? Why it's not getting attracted to the smallest planet like Jupiter? Uh, it depends upon the layers of those planets. Okay, but I'm um, just asking, like, uh, uh, according to you, the points, like, why, uh, but why it is not hitting other planets which are very small? Why is it only getting attracted? Sorry, like, there's no I'm case that uh, because uh, the points, I guess, will be somewhere, somewhere. So uh, there's no ca- case of like the asteroids going to some. So he's asking about asteroid. Why asteroids continuously attack? Only Jupiter, the biggest planet. I have done another theory for that asteroid theory. Asteroid theory. One. So go refer asteroid theory. Ah, Jago. Yeah, and he did the another one theory as well. Asteroid theory you... two, asteroid theory one, moon theory yeah. two, moon theory one. Yeah, Vishnu talk about the theory. It's dependent to this theory only. I think so. How if we throw an object in the space? No, is gravity there or not? That was too crazy. But I will say this universe itself, the planet, they are just a particle. Oh. 
Yeah, just a dust in it. For us, dust, just an atom. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. A lot of chances are there. Because uh, we had a session where we were discussing about uh, uh, Vishnu's uh, dream. Not this Vishnu. Actual creator's dream where Brahma gets created from the navel of uh, um, Vishnu where the flower blooms at top and everything is a dream and the universe structure of universe actually looks like a brain uh, structure the things the new neuron connections i think i no jagu especially brahma only created universe ah my brahma chan. created vishnu but what happened no, is that in vishnu's stomach no uh, like a roasting it comes and in Bra- hey, and brahma part. created the universe yeah <laughs> it's like a lotus padmanab yeah padmanab and the universe got created padman means lotus yeah. nabha means stomach vishnu are you sanskrit Yeah, yeah. He studies Sanskrit. in the school where they teach in Vedic methodology. But Jagu, in my school, they didn't teach Vedic. I'm going there as well. Yeah, he's also going there that class. Nice. Okay. Is there Ravina? What happened? See, if there are magnetic fields in space, then why do we even have money and data in our credit cards and debit cards? So ah. that's. Hmm. Want the want the field to just take away our data, just like that with the click. You just take away the data, right? Avi, are you talking about computer or about? You are space? talking about economics. I am talking about arrow. I am not talking about economics. See, if there were magnetic fields in space, credit cards, the data gets swiped off. Ah. So, so what will happen then? Well, so what does that mean? Pa? so that shows that space doesn't then why do, why is there still data in credit cards and debit cards so this shows that there is no magnetic field there it's just pure dark darkness anti matter are you saying are you saying that a credit card and debit cards need magnetic forces of course yes that's why you should never keep a magnet next to a credit card or a debit card it gets swiped off immediately hey, in future you will also become magnetic pa Oh. Yeah, I think so. Debit card and credit card we should not use due to magnetic field because when we use that, not will be wiped out. That's right. It cannot so, be cannot so magnet. So we cannot is, use. So then, even if a powerful magnet, see magnetic fields. That is, if we take the magnetic fields, it will easily take off the man. It will easily take off the data. Then what this is the use of proving saying like, that there is magnetic is like fields all like around the universe? Electromagnetic waves. Uh, so it is like you should not uh, go or expose too much to X rays. This is one form one form of electromagnetic wave. But our cell phones also use electromagnetic wave. Yeah, no. I mean, one minute. Our radios also use electromagnetic wave. Jagu, I know Jagu, but I am speaking but about. But Vishnu is. Jagu, Vishnu is currently emphasizing. Yeah. Jagu, Vishnu is emphasizing on magnetic waves. He is not saying electromagnetic yeah, waves. He is just that. emphasizing on magnetic waves. That's why I asked this question. Right, right. Electromagnetic waves are there. Oh, but then the magnetic fields are calm. We don't know. Hmm. Sorry, sorry. Electromagnetic waves are not only magnetic. Jago, I still present about these electromagnetic waves in my antenna. Hey, just now I saw a video two weeks before. Hmm. If if a magnet fully become ice, but it won't frozen. The magnetic the magnet is in frozen. Super conductivity. Yes. If we keep a magnet uh, another minus one ninety six degrees. Yes. It will float upward. Maybe this can be a Eisner's effect. Solution for the rotation or the radiation. Vishnu, I have a doubt. Are you speaking about magnetic field or electromagnetic field? It's obviously confusing me. Yes, for me, both are same. <laughs> But 
yeah vishnu but electromagnetic waves um using magnetic wave we can form electromagnetic waves okay in fact i it is presented about this electromagnetic wave how we can use it in an antenna i think so jagu may have remember that yeah that that that's good oh, yeah. yeah so vishnu and you solra concept and super conductivity even i was thinking the whole universe or planetary system could be super magnetic ஜிசிட்டி that's why i asked i wanted to know i'm i'm curious i'm yeah. not here to debunk anything so i need to explore just curious you have to leave now i have to eat okay. thank you bye okay so in the, in the video cut the drama okay. sir my in the youtube sir i guess some problem happened sir so the voice was not coming so sir i reuploaded sir so, so oh, yeah. no issue no issue so sorry sir so vishnu this is for you This is called quantum locking. Audio, how are you doing? Yeah, Jagu, yeah. Yes, Jagu. So what if we we got here? So we have quantum locking. The the superconductor is locked in space and it stays wherever I put it. You see this is quantum trapping. It's amazing. As, as long as it's So the supercond is superconducting it's can frozen with flip liquid nitrogen. It upside down. Right. and it stays mm-hmm. locked so the fact magnetic. that it's, it's superconducting is locking it's, uh, the magnetic field and it's right? yeah, see exactly. what happens we should not and you see because this is a sy- symmetric it can rotate without breaking see? without break the locking keeps rotating the locking doesn't break and there is no resistance it so it stays there on the both the natural magnet no current but the, it pivots on the yeah on the axis of no, the no, magnet no electro magnet it can move it yeah. on the side it will again pivot around the axis of the magnet because it makes sure that uh, the magnetic field inside of it stays the same right it's astonishing can you put it on the track for us yeah i just this one is crazy above the track quite high it's stuck you can just rotate it so it's actually floating above the surface think, no current yeah, it's floating it's locked just above pull the it, surface pull the so magnet could, you could tilt it as an angle and it would yeah, still more than like, like 200 this, degrees you could just go around like this because it go and put it at different height that key let the magnet on lock it at the yes, height yes yes not even a different height different configuration right. and i can even lock it at the uh, opposite way if you could just hold now you know you're going to put it upside down i'm doing the same so thing i can hang upside down locking it upside down and then you know you could be right what are you are saying could be right fantastic okay okay Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Super conductivity. Yeah, Jago. Super conductivity is an awesome concept. Jago, who found this super conductivity? Not sure, not sure, da. Not sure. Nah, I'll just da, search da. in Google. I'll just search in Google. Google. Yes, exactly. This is what I was showing, Vishnu. Nice. Jago, so, I'm just typing here. Yeah. Hmm. ஒரு <laughs> 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 
Well, there are two more present. Yeah, Jaguar got the answer. So, hey, conductor come along on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, this is one. He is one only. This only. Yeah. It's which no did it crazy, Jaguar. Yeah, yes. yeah, obviously. Sir, even like, though it's like. Uh, kind of you know it's, it's logical it's very crazy type yes yes exactly these are the kind of people who could uh, bring in like einstein came this kind of idea newton came with uh, this kind of ideas if you look at when says as uh, even uh, like uh, galileo before the earth was, before the universe was believed earth is in the center and when someone uh, like galileo said sun is in the center no one believed him A lot of people started believing him even he was given a uh, punishment right death sentence i guess hi sunana hello so our new young researchers so just now done thank you vishnu let's give a huge round of applause for vishnu vishnu once you have finished 50 uh, theories we will be publishing it as a book okay yeah jagu that jagu sunana hmm. who is that so who is that sunana Sunaina is our uh, regular program student. She is in level five now. Jago, from which country she is? She is Chennai. Okay. Okay. Next, Jago. welcome our present. Uh, uh, next, well, yeah, yeah. Next, then we have Rana Deep. Rana Deep, who is going to present on this top topic, Sky Hook. He is grade nine student from Apollo Isha Vidya Niketan, and he is the he is with this company Aerospace now. Uh, yes, Ranadi, please you can start. Is my screen visible? Yes. yes. Namaskaram to all. My name is Sandeep, and I'm and I'm studying in Apollo Isha Vidya Niketan. Today I'm going to present the topic Sky Hook. So contents of this presentation: What is Sky Hook? Parts of Sky Hook? How it works? Some history about it? How can we use it? Challenges to face and conclusion. What is Sky Hook? A skyhook is a proposed momentum exchange that aims to reduce the cost of placing play loads into low earth orbit parts of skyhook counterweight that the which is made up of xylon a catching tip how it works a counterweight holds a long cable in place while it rotates around a circle a rotating tether slows down its tip relative to the ground at the bottom and speeds it up at the top like a catapult This means that you can transfer energy from the tether and get a massive boost when released. Some hints, some history about it. In 2000 and 2001, Boeing Phantom Works, with a grant from NASA Institute for Advanced Concepts, performed a detailed study of the engineering and commercial feasibility of various skyhook designs. They studied in detail a specific variant of this concept called hypersonic airplane space tether orbital launch system. or hastol this design called for a hypersonic ramjet or scramjet aircraft to intercept a rotating hook while flying at mach 10 how can we use it we can transport more payload into space with less fuel we can use it for the planet to planet transport system we can use it for exploring space with less fuel and less cost challenges to face spacecraft catching the skyhook step is one of the challenges and another challenge is keeping the skyhook in orbit conclusion this could make a sustainable solution for making space travel affordable and the rest of the solar system accessible for exploration and exploration considering that we have the technology to build them today nice In my next presentation, we will be seeing an in-depth explanation for the planet-to-planet transportation and uh, asteroid mining using Skyhook, and answers for the challenges given in today's presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Nice, nice. I definitely expect a lot of questions from 
uh, people who want to explore mars people who want to mine asteroids it's amazing and short presentation yeah what what did you say who wants who wants to who wants to try vignesh what did he say what is uh, skyhook vignesh adarsh naman so this is this is a new concept all together you put a who kind of thing like pull it and throw it outside for the space sky hook and if you have any quiz yes sir okay put the in quiz nearby yes, yes yes i tried in your pod near pod near pod quiz Yeah, Jago, I don't know about this Nia Pond because we log in with the teacher, Anna. Okay. So, what do you think about this? Yeah, I will explain later. Yes, Nama. If I can, I'll explain it in yeah. detail on how to make your own Nia Pond. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, Nama. No problem, da. So, Jago, yeah, I I have a point about sky sky hook. We can use for. mass colonization especially because if you take a sky hook you no know, it can use we can use it for asteroid mining and also mass colonization also you can use the sky hook and uh, and in sky hook if you i just typed in the google about sky hook adventures yeah. okay what all adventures can you do on, on the sky hook okay. so basically in this Skyhook, wait, Jago, I'm just kind of screen sharing it again. The students can join the quiz in the. Oh, link. adventures of Skyhook. So, you if you click this thing, you can see everything about the Skyhook adventures, Jago. Okay. So I'll share the link at the chat box. Just just type in the Google Skyhook. It's not the tough thing. There is an quiz link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joining Jago. Jago, I but Skyhook is better than a rocket, spaceship, or starship because basically I have seen Skyhook where aliens will travel. Huh? In Skyhook, aliens will travel. Okay. I guess I wish. So we so we can travel for ten minutes. Like ten people can travel. Skyhook. Okay. Okay, so all of you join the quiz link. So, uh, Ranadi, we can share the quiz uh, thing, the screen. So, I'm just joining Ranadi. So but who sent the link? Ah, uh, Ranadi, Ranadi. Both, both are same links. Okay, sir. Jagu, call Jagu. Jagu, you can call me as Jagu the Super Monkey. Yeah, yeah. you can call me Jagu the Super Monkey. So all these are like three people join. So the three people are jumping. Yes. We are joined. Anish joined. Vignesh also joined. Yeah, Jago, they are so cute. <laughs> I know that's why I don't do this. Jago, I always join in this bear only. Jago, <laughs> compulsory. I join in bar only. Okay. And okay. these cards actually when you get uh, when you sign in, you get these characters when you sign in. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when you don't sign in, you will only get four characters. That's like the panda. No, you can use it. even if you don't sign in. No, 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 no. I don't even sign in. Actually. Okay, let's wait for a few more minutes, then we can start. No, we will do characters. We will have fifteen characters. All the characters that are there. Yeah, all the characters that are there will get not specifically. There will be an arrow key. Yeah. Seven connected. Satya ki joined. Anish, Vignesh, Priya, Harijit, Dash. Harijit, you are like an alien, da. <laughs> yeah, she is. Like, I think so. Harjit is a she alien. I ah, think so. It's like an octopus uh, keychain. Okay, I think we can start. Um, start from 
Yeah. Good. Okay. Hello. Skyhook is a proposed DAS exchange. The Skyhook is a, yeah, Sky Hook is a proposed DAS exchange together. Option you can tell it. And we cannot, I think, we can't see it. Yaro race la very thermo order the other. Skyhook aims to. Skyhook aims to. So we are on Harij the running. Counterweight dash a catching tip for the parts of Skyhook. Counterweight dash a catching tip for the parts of Skyhook. Anish is to. Anish is to. Anish and Anish. The tether which is used in Skyhooks is made up of. Made up of. You specifically mentioned that. Uh, material Raman jumped very close 48 points yes Jago who performed a detailed study of the engineering and commercial feasibility of various skyhook designs when did they perform Boeing Phantom Works studied in detail a specific variant of this concept called The design call for a hypersonic ramjet or scramjet aircraft to intercept a rotating hook while flying at Mac. You also specifically mentioned that this Mac ramjet. How we can use Skyhook? How can we use how we can use Skyhook? Anish Naman Dash. Nice. Anish followed by Naman followed by Riya. Uh, oh, wait, uh, Ranadeep, uh, can you stop sharing screen for a second? I'll show the participant point of view. Okay. Okay, okay just look right. Uh, this is how it looks like. Oh. So, how do I mean, you. I've never seen this actually, this participant point of view. Chart. Let me take a screenshot of it. Nice. Beautiful. It's a very uh, new and uh, very advanced topic. Uh, Skyhook. It's I think a few of them. It's a topic which is like very new. And uh, students who are watching it uh, for the first time, you can do more research on what is Skyhook, how it is going to reduce the cost of space travel or asteroid mining, anything. No. So, yeah, there are a lot of options available. Thank you. Let's give a huge round of applause for the yeah, leaderboard. It's amazing presentation on Anish, Naman, Riya, Darsh, 
सत्य की सुनायना हरजीत श्रीजीत विकेश सोलर सिस्टम एंड बियॉन्ड so that is uh, this is his 12th presentation on this topic 12th and 11th 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 presentation on this topic planets of solar system and beyond and uh, he is a grade 5 student ekya school btm what is the full form of your uh, school anaman ekya ekya okay Nice. So that's Akia School from uh, BTM, and uh, he is he has he is part of this company called Aerospace now. Okay, come on, we can start. Yes, sir. Go so. So good evening, everyone. My name is Thomas, and. Today I will be presenting on planets of the solar system and beyond. Part eleven. Just give me a couple seconds. I will share my screen. So, let me just share screen. Um, yeah, here we go. So, yes, yes. planets of the solar system and beyond, Part Eleven by Navana Shah Space. Now, me. A note for whoever is in regular with my presentation or newcomers. This is a series where I talk about planets of the solar system and further and further to the exoplanets. This will go on until I run out of planets to discuss on. Thank you and enjoy. I might do other presentations in between. So. A couple rules are present. No interruption. Questions at the end of the presentation. Interactions are purely allowed. Designed to interact. Feedback and suggestions at the end. Sit back and relax while I present. Do not copy any of this content. So, Kepler twenty two B. Interesting topic. A planet, should I say? What kind of an exoplanet is Kepler twenty two B? Kepler twenty two b, also known by its Kepler object of interest designation, KY zero eight seven point zero one, is an exoplanet orbiting within the habitable zone of the sun-like star Kepler twenty two. It is located about six hundred light years, or one hundred eighty parsec, from Earth in the constellation of Cygnus. It was discovered by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope in December two thousand eleven. It was the first known transiting planet to orbit within the habitable zone of a sun-like star. Liquid water could exist on the planet's surface. Kepler 22b is too dim. I mean, Kepler 22 is too dim to be seen with the naked eye. Kepler 22b's radius is roughly twice that of Earth. Its mass and surface composition are unknown. An Earth-like composition for the planet has been ruled out. It is likely to have a volatile-rich composition with a liquid or gaseous outer shell. The only parameters of the object's orbit are currently available at its orbital period, which is about 290 days, and its inclination, which approximately is 90 degrees. Evidence suggests that the planet has a moderate surface temperature, assuming the surface is not extreme greenhouse heat. In the absence of an atmosphere, its equilibrium temperature, assuming an Earth-like albedo, but when an albedo is the amount of partial light reflected by any um, object in space by a star or any light source, and it would be approximately two hundred sixty-two Kelvin. 
equal negative 11 degrees Celsius compared with Earth 155 degrees Kelvin. 80 negative 18 degrees Celsius. So, can Kepler 22 be colonized? Dub the Goldilocks zone or habitable zone. This is the orbitable band where temperatures are just right to allow the existence of surface liquid water. This means the planet could have continents and oceans just like Earth. Scientists believe Kepler 22b may not only be habitable, but possibly even inhabitable. Some people believe the 20 Kepler 22b might have too much water, but for now it's habitable. So I'm going to show a couple of videos, and after that, go on to the quiz. So if you enjoy what I do, then please don't forget. And the sound is very low. The sound is very low, Naman. Okay, wait. Okay, just a second. Happy Friday. Located about 630 light okay. years away, we find yeah, yeah. Kepler 22. This is a G type star, very similar to our own Sun. In fact, it has 97% of our Sun's mass and 98% of its radius. It also has 80% of the luminosity of our Sun, so we can see initially that these stars are very similar. More exciting than the fact that we've found a star similar to our Sun is the additional fact that smack bang within the habitable zone, Kepler-22 has a planet called, well, Kepler-22b. So what kind of planet is Kepler-22b? The truth is, we don't completely know, but there are some characteristics of this planet that we do know, and we can make some hypotheses about the other conditions there. We know that Kepler-22b has a radius about 2.4 times that of the Earth. This means that it's about halfway in size between the Earth and Neptune. We also know that it orbits its parent star at a distance of about 130 million kilometers. This puts its orbit again somewhere between that of Venus and the Earth. It also takes 290 days to complete one orbit meaning it's got a year similar to a year here on Earth. It is possible that Kepler-22b could be a mini Neptune. That's a planet with a solid core and a thick gaseous atmosphere. More likely though, and I think more interestingly, is the idea that this is a water world. Again, a rocky core surrounded by huge oceans encircling the entire planet. The planet is right in the zone where liquid water would exist. And so another blue dot is a very real possibility. We don't really know the mass of the planet yet, but some estimates are in the region of about 36 times that of the Earth. If that's the case, then the surface gravity will be about 6 times here on Earth. 6 Gs is the most extreme G-force a person would experience on even the most extreme of roller coasters. This is more G's than the Apollo astronauts experienced on liftoff. The G-force exerted by this planet will push your blood to your feet and away from your brain. Most people lose consciousness after only a few seconds of being subjected to this level of force. However, that's very much an estimate. Kepler-22b was discovered by the transit method, where a star will dim ever so slightly as a planet passes in front of it. This allows us to estimate quite well the radius of the planet, but tells us very little about its mass. Other estimates of the mass have suggested somewhere between 6 and 15 times that of the Earth. The lower estimate would give Kepler-22b a surface gravity only slightly above that here on Earth. Whatever the gravity, if life has developed in the buoyant conditions found in the oceans, the gravity, extreme or otherwise, wouldn't be a problem. High gravity also isn't necessarily a barrier to the development of life anyway. It just means that life would have evolved differently to life here on Earth and would develop adaptations to allow it to survive in high gravity situations. Now, I haven't done this in a live stream, but I 
did this before my sister started live streams. I did a presentation on generic modification, if anyone remembers. So, what I was thinking the moment I saw this part was that why don't we modify ourselves just like this? Several species of fish live in Antarctic seas called antifreeze problems to their blood and creatures like that we could use them and a so perfect example could also be tardigrades. Species like that which can survive much have a more capability of survival than humans on in space or in different planets. We can modify ourselves like them. Situations. So what other conditions might we expect on this rocky behemoth? It's in the right kind of area for liquid water to exist, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it does. If Kepler-22b really does have an Earth-like atmosphere, no matter what the actual composition, the surface of continuous water really is a possibility. The temperature over the planet would be a balmy but not deadly 22 degrees Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit. There is another possibility however. Kepler-22b falls in the right area where it could either be a more Earth-like or it could be more Venus-like. If a thick atmosphere rich in greenhouse gases existed, Kepler-22b could find itself going down the same planetary evolution as our neighbour Venus. This would mean that energy from the star would find it difficult to leave the planet's atmosphere and could result in temperatures over the planet of about 460 degrees Celsius. In addition, water on these ocean worlds would be unlike water here on Earth. Even though water covers about 70% of the surface of our planet, it only accounts for a tiny fraction of the Earth's mass. On these water worlds, the oceans would be so deep and so expansive that at lower depths, even at very high temperatures, the pressure would be so intense that the water would form an exotic form of ice called Ice 5. Now that's sci-fi if I ever heard it. These planets might not have any land poking above the waves at all. So could Kepler-22b have life? If it is indeed a water world, it could most definitely host life. Kepler-22 is about 4 billion years old. Compared to the 4.6 billion years for our Sun, this means that there has been sufficient time for life to evolve on this planet, and it may contain one of the most important ingredients for life, that of liquid water. We can't know if life has in fact evolved, or indeed the possible nature of that life, but it is nice to imagine the directions evolution might have taken on a planet dominated so much by a watery environment. The only issue to the possible development of life on this planet is oddly enough the amount of water there. Our seas are salty and that salt is actually important nutrients that life growing in the seas requires. Those nutrients get into the water by washing off the rocks and the sea floor. If you were to increase the amount of water in our seas then those important nutrients would become more and more dilute. There comes a point at which those nutrients will become so dilute that they wouldn't be able to support life as we know it. Also, at extreme depths of water, the pressure of the water would be so high that it would effectively stop tectonic movements, blocking the volcanic activity needed to bring about the right conditions for life. This is all just conjecture though, and we don't really know if life has developed there or not. I, for one, like to believe that it has. Sadly though, at 600 light years away, don't expect to be going on that day trip anytime soon. I, for one, am a science optimist and I like to think that as we learn more and more about the universe, we'll learn more and more about this interesting world. But for now, let us return to Earth, and as always, thank you for watching. Jag sa spoltimman bara. Jag har en kedja till på Okej.
Jag är villig att offra livet ditt för att rädda Europa. Uh, anything related to Naman's topic, you can ask him. Jago, why did you go stop screen share? Yeah, some ad is running, I thought. It's running. Okay, you can share it again. Okay, just a second. Oh, is, that an, is it our next video? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. Team hele sæsonen nu på Via Play. Astronomers announced the discovery of Kepler 22b, a planet orbiting a star, not unlike our own sun, at a distance where life can thrive. The discovery was announced by a team of astronomers using the Kepler Space Telescope. Launched in 2009, Kepler's sole purpose is to hunt for Earth-like worlds around other stars. Unlike other telescopes, Kepler stares at a region of the sky in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. Its 95-megapixel camera monitors 150,000 stars in its field of view. But Earth-like planets are impossible to directly image using our very best telescopes. They're simply lost in the glare of their parent stars when seen from such great distances. Instead, Kepler monitors the slightest of changes in brightness of the star as its planet transits in front of it during its orbit. Using this technique, Kepler has discovered 28 exoplanets, and as many as 1,500 possible new worlds are awaiting confirmation. Over time, the light from Kepler-22 briefly flickered by just one half of one one thousandth of a percent, once every 290 days. Astronomers quickly understood that this was a planet within Kepler-22's habitable zone. A habitable zone is a range of distances around a star where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold to support life. A habitable zone around a hotter star would be farther out, while a habitable zone around a cooler star would be closer in. Given a star's temperature, there is an orbit where the temperature is just right for life. Kepler-22b's orbital period places the planet within Kepler-22's habitable zone. The star at Kepler-22 is almost identical to our own sun, just 220 degrees Kelvin cooler. So its habitable zone is slightly closer, making Kepler-22b a strong candidate for finding life. Kepler-22b is 2.4 times the diameter of Earth, placing it somewhere between Earth and Neptune in size. But so far, we know nothing else not its composition, or even if it has an atmosphere inside of which life could survive. Astronomers will need to use different types of telescopes at optical and infrared wavelengths to determine what kind, if any, atmosphere might exist at Kepler-22b. At 600 light years away, we will not be able to visit Kepler-22b anytime soon to see for ourselves if life really does exist there. But that hasn't stopped the SETI Institute from using the Allen Telescope Array and taking a listen for any possible artificial signals coming from Kepler-22b, just in case. Meanwhile, the hunt for Earth-like worlds continues with the Kepler Telescope, and an ever-growing archive of data is being produced. And we need your help sorting through it all. PlanetHunters.org is a site where anyone can log in to examine Kepler's data and help identify the telltale signal of orbiting planets. Could Kepler-22b really be a second Earth? Well, that remains to be seen. But what is truly remarkable is that we are now able to detect worlds orbiting within stars' habitable zones. Kepler-22b is only the first of many more such worlds surely to be discovered. Life-bearing planets have long been speculated. Kepler 22b is a major step toward knowing they truly exist. So, quiz time. Quiz time. It's near point or power point? Near point. Near point. Okay. Okay, Naman, can you tell me how can we make the quiz? 
இன்னே போர் ஓகே எல்லாம் லாகின் பண்ணுங்க சொல்லுங்க அப்புறம் ஓகே ஆஃப்டர் ஐ ஃபினிஷ் மை பிரசன்டேஷன் ஐ will go over it in detail practically and i say okay for to anyone who is interested how do we will log in also i don't worry i will explain it after i okay okay jago when naman is teaching quiz you can off the live stream yeah yeah and we can keep the meeting the quiz now first i have it self ask it in the chat box jago no jago we can like uh, we can also show it to live people also yeah yes yeah. so many uh, time you never know we can do, okay jago after yeah. naman finishes his um, quiz and teaching can can we off the live stream jago he can teach on okay jago master so okay jago that will be helpful I'm for lot of people and then uh, we can end it yeah okay live stream is up the so, quiz link is ஹாலோவின் மாஸ்டி <laughs> 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 Ajit, you are a giraffe monster. <laughs> you are a bear monster. <laughs> and Rhea is a dog monster. <laughs> a jumping one with glasses. But the glasses are hidden because the mask is there. Naman, I will... Shall I join Fox? Because I love Fox. is the tiger menu naman because i live in one days and i will rejoin in another device okay because i think that there is tiger <laughs> because tiger is my favorite animal or there is dinosaur hmm. by the way there's no dinosaur that's why my background is sort of let's say in the afternoon because i am in denmark but in denmark denmark huh? yes okay. time is 4 for for an hour hours back so it's like 4 o'clock here me do jago <laughs> okay jago, i am in fact in united kingdom Yeah, Jago. Last year I was in Germany, but this year I gone to UK. That's all. Okay. You is in the UK? Yeah. I can you UK. start it, Naman? Uh, I can start. Okay. If nobody else is joining, I'll start. And then we also will, you know. And by the way, if you want to see the questions, I will show them. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Here you can see the questions and options. Nice. So I'll participate view can attend. Don't worry about it. Everything is good to go. So I'll go with the first question and second question. 
because the first question is standard. The candy has no atmosphere. No more false. Okay. If you know the answer, then you will answer. You must be very attentive. Because like, I just pick up questions from nowhere. Even the minute details come. Cannot be colonized. Yes or no? It's a very debating question. Okay. Orbital period of Kepler 22b. This method was this was this is a very simple question. I'm pretty what? sure everyone will get this correct. Yeah. Yes, everyone did. We also discussed in one of the trigger the spark sessions. It's level three or four. How far is Kepler 22 from Earth? We from Earth and Parsec. It is in Parsec, not like this. 178, 162, 187. One. When was Kepler 22B discovered? Everything is December. You just need to remember the year. Kepler 22 be discovered. December 2010, 11, 12, 13. All in December. All right. How inclined is Kepler going to be in access? This is a simple question. No, they are claiming the mountain. This, all this. From next presentation of mine, it will change. Hmm? Kepler 22b is or an. Super like exoplanet, Saturn like exoplanet, Uranus like exoplanet, Earth like exoplanet. I know. Can't get the answer of this. So, Ria is top, and second, Sudeki, Ranadeep, Rajiv, English. Naman, Naman, can you share? Stop sharing and just bar. In uh, um, participants' point of view, I'll just show it. <laughs> yeah, just hang on. Okay, stop share. Okay, I'll just share it. Yeah, can you share my, see my screen? Yeah. So first is like, yeah. So it's like a mountain or something like that. Uh, what to say? Yeah. Like, the moment it ends, there will be like, um, the winner will be shown with a flag and the treasure. Yeah, after that, yeah. Yes. After, After that, this it. should come. Congratulations, yeah. sir. Okay. Okay, I can stop sharing. So that is all for today. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Nice, Bye. nice, nice. That's part of. Uh, it's an amazing presentation. Super presentation. Well done. Kindly put your feedbacks in our YouTube live as well. And. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for all of you. This is uh, chapter number 26. We successfully completed 25 chapters. And um, happy Halloween for watching this. Because I just now saw it in one year ago. I'm just crazy, crazy. Cutie mm. mm. dogs. Mm, we are done. Okay. And happy advanced Diwali. To all audience as well. Yeah, advance happy, 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 happy.
Yes, I go happy Diwali in advance. Happy Diwali. Okay, thank you. Happy Diwali in advance. Bye, bye, bye. See you next week with a new set of audience, new set of presentations. I'll see you, bye-bye. Bye-bye.